Hi and welcome back. It's now been three years since I started my NMN experiment. I've got the latest results from my blood test. Uh, let's compare these blood test results to the other results I've had over the last few years. Let's quickly cover the supplements I was taking when I had this blood test. NMN, 1.5 grams per day. Transresveratrol, transresveratrol, that's easier to say, 1.5 grams a day. TMG, 1.5 grams a day. Berberine, 1.5 grams a day. Vitamin D3, 5,000 international units a day. And 10,000 on a Sunday and a Wednesday. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms, that's the MK7 type. Magnesium, 250 milligrams a day, and that's the L3 and 8 type. Hyaluronic acid, 200 milligrams of the high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, which is the type that you need to be looking for. Quercetin, 2.4 grams per day on the first, second and third of each month. Fisetin, 2.4 grams a day again on the first, second and third of each month. And every day with my um, yogurt and three times a week with resveratrol, I'm taking one tablespoon of dried parsley. So first of all, let's move on to my lipid profile. As before, I'm not going to mention everything. I'm only going to highlight the things that are either high or low or cause for concern. You can see here my LDL cholesterol is still high although it's the lowest I've ever been. Um, restrictions have been lifted now in the UAE to a certain degree and I can actually take the blood test in Abu Dhabi, don't have to drive all the way to Dubai, which also means I can get the free consultation with the doctor in Abu Dhabi, I don't have to drive to Dubai. Uh, the doctor I spoke to this time, uh, a young lady, I say young, much younger than the doctors I had spoken to previously, um, she was also of the mindset that this, as a singular marker, should not be taken in isolation and seen as a risk for cardiovascular disease and, and the such, which is which is a welcome um, change. Also, I came across this clip by Dr. Uh, Sean Baker, where he talks about two studies in particular that also um, mention that LDL as a single marker is not necessarily the reason for cardiac uh, disease, etc. Take a look at this video. Uh, there's a new study that just came out uh, the other day looking at the thought that LDL cholesterol is contributing to heart disease. And the study seriously can, uh, um, questions uh, the reliability of that particular relationship and the fact that maybe it's, the relationship is not as strong as we think it is. It also looks at um, the use of statins for lowering LDL cholesterol and does it actually have a true benefit or is that benefit very minor and, and the study concludes that it seems to be a pretty minor benefit and it's inconsistent and that maybe we need to reevaluate uh, the way we look at these types of things and again we're seeing stronger and stronger evidence when it comes to heart disease the things that really truly seem to make a big difference again i've said this before diabetes pre-diabetes metabolic syndrome obesity blood pressure and then history of smoking those things seem to be the most impactful things when it comes to preventing cardiovascular disease. And cardiovascular disease, again, as you know, is the number one killer. In the United States, something around 800,000 people a year, I think, let the cholesterol be where it is. You remember I showed you guys a study from uh, South Korea, 12.8 million people looking at all-cause mortality and cholesterol. The most beneficial or least likely to die group are those that have total cholesterol between 210 and 249 milligrams per deciliter, which is much higher than places like the American Heart Association would recommend it be. So interesting times. Uh, remember, the science is often wrong for you the, 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 the follow the science people. And so maybe this new study is wrong. Maybe the old studies are wrong. Hard to say. Let's take a look at my blood sugar. You can see here that it's still uh, in the increased risk bracket. It's gone from 5.7 to 6, which is a bit of a jump. Uh, and my average blood glucose, which was 115, is now gone to 126, which is in the fair control bracket. Um, the doctor didn't think it was a cause for concern, but I did a um, blood sugar test there and then in the doctor's office because uh, I think the appointment was 10 o'clock. So I'd, I'd been fasting, hadn't drunk anything since the night before and it came in, I think it was the low 90s. So she said that's not really a cause for concern. Some people get these kind of scores, uh, but it's not necessarily um, something to worry about with regard to uh, diabetes. So that's it for my um, blood sugar. Let's take a look at my liver. You can see that although this is purple, that's because you can see here on the right, they've actually changed the reference range because I've used a different uh, clinic and they've used a different laboratory. They've got slightly different numbers or they measure in a different way. Uh, these are all that said, 
within reference range, including this one. The only one that was out was my globin levels. It's 2.1, 2.5 is the minimum. But when the doctor looked at all the other things that were relevant to this, she said that in isolation is not really anything to be worried about. So again, feel free to pause the video and look at these in detail, but that's my, um, that's my liver profile. Let's take a look at my renal profile. You can see here that my uric acid is high. Um, although it's not particularly high, she did give me some recommendations with regard to diet to try and bring that down. Um, again, the blood urea nitrogen number is slightly high, which also made this um, ratio number high. She thinks that by adjusting the diet ever so slightly, uh, I could bring these numbers back down into the reference range. So that's something I'll do for the next three months uh, and check at the next blood test. Moving on to thyroid, you can see here that these are all within reference range. There's a slight change in the color there because they change the way that they measure it, but the measurement that they now use is still within the range, so there's nothing to worry about there. Vitamin D, uh, up to 72.46, so still well below the, the 80, which is recommended as the upper level. Um, this jump from 62 to 72 may be because I'm taking 10,000 um, international units twice a week and um, that's good because vitamin D is an extremely important vitamin although it's a hormone uh, that's a number I always want to try and keep high. Vitamin B12 drops slightly but still well within the reference range and again talking to the doctor nothing that seems to be of any worry. Now that said uh, since I've moved back to the UAE I haven't got a barbecue uh, I don't like to cook steak on a frying pan so I've been eating a lot more fish um, I'm actually getting a barbecue delivered today, so I will start to eat steak again by the weekend. So in the next three months, I'm hoping the vitamin B12 will go up because I'll be eating a lot more red meat. Um, so that's it for vitamin B12. Let's now look at my testosterone. You can see here it's dropped dramatically from 913 to 390. It's actually dropped down to lower than it was in October 19. Um, Along with testosterone, if you get a low testosterone, you lose your sex drive, which I, which I haven't lost. Um, you also lose energy and muscle mass. Except, I've seen no changes whatsoever in anything from the last time I took it, which was in November 21. Um, so I'm kind of hoping this, like has happened before, is probably an error in um, the laboratory report. And come the next three monthly check, I'm hoping the number comes back up. Uh, I haven't seen a drop in performance or attitude or motivation, so I can only think it is a, an error in the lab. We'll find out uh, in three months' time. Let's take a look at my iron score. You can see there 54, so down to 54 from 57, but still above the 50, so no concern there really. Homocysteine from 14 to 15, so it's gone up, but it's still well below the 30.0 that uh, is the reference range. CRP, C-reactive protein, from 0 0.59 up to 0 0.71. So that's an increase, but still well below the 3.0 um, that is classed with uh, as acceptable or within reference range. Moving on, lipoprotein A, you can see it's gone from 4.21 to 13, which is quite a big jump, and it is a marker for a risk of heart disease. That said, in isolation, the doctor said not really an issue, and 13 is still well below the 30, which is the, the warning area. Uh, Apolipoprotein, uh, that's A, B, and also the ratio. No problem there, all well within the reference range. Amylase, again, well within the reference range, 70, and uh, it can be anywhere between 28 and 100. Lipase, again, it's, it's changed color, because they've changed the measurement that they do. They don't do microliters, they do UL, uh, but 93 is still well within the reference range. Fructosamine, or fructosamine is, wasn't tested for some reason. I did ask them why it wasn't included, and I'm just waiting for an answer. So moving on, let's take a look at my blood work. The first one here you can see, and again, feel free to pause the video, all of these well within reference range, no changes, no massive changes there to worry about. Uh, the second blood panel, again, all well within the reference range. Nothing there to worry about. Also, urine, um, although there was a concern with my uric uh, acid levels, you can see here, nothing there has changed really from the last one and everything is all within reference range. Nothing that the doctor said was of any concern. EGFR, uh, it's gone from 83 to 87, so it's heading in the right direction. 90 
is what you call normal. So I'm three away from 90. At the moment, this is um, I'm between 60 and 89. So still a mild decrease in performance. Uh, I also had this time for uh, a change estradiol, which is um, the measure of estrogen, which is the female hormone in males. Uh, my score came out at 41.1, which is high because it should be between zero and 40. And again, the doctor said, not really a massive issue. Uh, things such as losing body weight and, and putting on muscle mass will help to reverse this. So um, now that I'm back in the Middle East and I'm training three, four times a week uh, and I'm doing more strength training, I'm hoping that I'm going to start losing more weight and start putting more muscle mass on. Hopefully this number may come, come down. I'm probably not going to check it again in the next three months. I might do it in six months time. So that's it for my uh, estrogen levels. So those are the results after three years. I think not too bad and uh, nothing there that caused the doctor any concern. She did say to look into a low purine diet, which would help bring down my uric acid levels. Um, a very positive experience with the doctor, far more so than previous ones. Uh, quite happy that I was intermittent fasting as much as I was. No issues with my low carb, high fat diet. Uh, no focusing in on the one marker LDL or indeed any other single markers. Um, and thinking that needed to be addressed. Looking at it holistically, she said there was not really that much wrong, especially considering my age. Uh, well, that's it for today. Let me know what you think about the blood test results. Let me know if there's something in there that you think is of concern that I should probably look at more than just the uric acid levels and a low purine diet. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.